Hi, welcome back to the channel Best Educom Trainer. In this video, we will help you learn the formation of sentence structure. So, you will learn to construct all kind of sentences of English from simple to long complex ones. So, we will start by understanding what is a sentence. A sentence is a group of words which make complete sense. Here the words should have a complete meaning. What is the simplest sentence that you can make in English? Think. Okay, I will tell you. Run, play, read. These are the simplest sentences that you can make in English. Did you notice the simplest sentence is a verb? They are just one word long. Of course, maximum sentences are longer than this. So let me introduce you to sentence structure. A sentence consists of subject and predicate. What is a subject? A subject is a noun or pronoun about which the statement is made. So let's add a subject to our one word sentences. We add a subject to understand it. He runs, they were playing, she reads. Time to learn what is a predicate. A predicate is a part of the sentence which has the verb and which tells us what the subject is or does. Basically, predicate shares the information about the subject. Did you notice that predicate consists of two parts, verb and object? Verb can be in any form, present, past or future, simple or continuous. Now I will introduce Miss Susie who will explain you the sentence structure in a better way. Hi, welcome to the classroom of Miss Susie. How are you? Thank you Meg ma'am for a great learning. But let's learn subject and predicate in my style. That is Susie's style. So. A complete sentence consists of subject which is the naming part and predicate which is the telling part. I will help you learn how subject and predicate make a complete sentence. Let's take the first part which is the subject and as I told you it is the naming part. So it tells who or what the sentence is about. Let's take an example. Charles plays basketball. Now who is this sentence about? In this sentence, Charles is the subject, as this sentence is about Charles. Let's take another example. The car is black. Now, can you tell me what is the subject here? Yes, you are right, the car. The subject, because the sentence is about the car. Let's take another example. The dog was barking in the street. What's the subject here? Perfect! The sentence is about the dog, so the dog is the subject. Now, I hope the subject part is clear to you. Let's move to the second part. Predicate. Now, it is the telling part. It tells what someone or something is or does. Let's take an example for it. Mr. Sam lost his red car. Can you tell me what did Mr. Sam do? Yes, he lost his red car. Now, which is the predicate of the sentence? Can you guess the predicate in the next sentence? The birds were chirping in the garden. Yes, you are right. Bird chirping in the garden is the predicate. The third sentence is Jack and Jill went down the hill. What is the predicate here? Great! Went down the hill because it tells what Jack and Jill did. Now I hope it is clear that we need both subject and predicate to make a complete sentence. If you have the subject, the cow, is it a complete sentence? No, because you have no idea what, where, what the cow is doing, right? So if we have only the predicate, bright and beautiful, do you think it is a complete sentence? Of course not. Why? Because you do not know what is bright and beautiful. The morning, the sunset, the ocean view, the scenery. So, we need both subject and predicate to make a complete sentence. Back to Mehek Ma'am's class. 
What is an object? Object is the person or a thing that receives the action of verb. Let's take a complete sentence. I am watching TV. So, I is the subject, am is the helping verb, watching is verb and TV is the object. The biggest mistake that people do when speaking in English is that they think in their mother tongue and frame accordingly. This is not the right technique. English is very different from other languages. Let's take an example. Agar hum Hindi mein kahe, main TV dekh raha hoon. So, the sentence structure becomes subject plus object plus verb. Agar hum iske accordingly convert karenge English mein, so it will become I TV watching, which is not the correct form. So, the correct form will be subject plus verb plus object. So, the example becomes I am watching TV. So, from these sentences, we understand that for a complete sentence to exist, we do not need more words. Precisely two or more words can make a complete sentence if they deliver a correct meaning. Going further, we understand that two word sentences make a complete sentence. But sometimes we might need a little more information. Let's see what you can add. Let's take an example. She reads. What you can add? You can add adverb of place. So, she reads in the library. You can also add adverb of time. So, she reads in the afternoon or you can add both. She reads in the library in the afternoon. You could also add adverb of manner. She reads fast. You may say you have many choices but your choices are also limited. Let's see what you cannot add. You cannot add another verb, an adjective and a noun with the same meaning. I hope this is clear to you. Now it is time to introduce something new. But before that, I will request you to pause the video and check if you have understood everything. I hope you have done it. So let's continue. Let's introduce a compliment. Compliment is something that will answer your question what comes next. She reads, put a full stop and it is correct. Short, simple and correct. Let's see some other examples. I have, he threw, we go. These are also sentences, but you will never say them like that. Why? Because they leave you with a question. I have what, he threw what, we go where. So, we will introduce some information that is a complement to these sentences. Let's discuss it with an example. She likes. Please pause the video for 3 seconds and complete the sentence in 3 ways. These are my options. It is not only these sentences that need a compliment. You might need a compliment where you have to finish a sentence. Let's see another example. She likes going. This is grammatically a correct sentence. But again, you will never say it like that. Why? because you need to add more information to it. She likes going out. Again, you need to answer the question where. So if I say she likes going out to malls. So all the words after the verb are complement in the sentence. What we have learned till now, it will be very easy for you to construct sentences. But before moving ahead, let's sum up what we have learned. We have learned subject and predicate, Compliments and why it is important to complete sentences. There are four kind of sentences. Declarative, interrogative, exclamatory and imperative. Now I will hand over to Miss Susie again. Welcome back. Okay, now I tell you a story. Rohan went to the garden with his mother and sister. The sun was rising, the flowers were blooming and the birds were chirping. He saw a beautiful butterfly and exclaimed with joy. What a beautiful butterfly it is! He also saw a red rose and was going to pluck it. But his mom said, Don't pluck flowers Rohan, go and play with your friends. Rohan ran and turned around to his sister and said, Do you want to play? She nodded and they both went. 
Did you notice these sentences make a statement? So, these type of sentences are declarative sentences. And always remember they end in a full stop. Now, in this sentence, a, there is an exclamation of an emotion of joy. So, when there is an expressing emotion of happiness, anger, fear, disgust and shock, these kind of sentences are exclamatory sentences and they always end with an exclamatory sign. In these two sentences, there is a command. So, to tell someone to do something is called an imperative sentence. It can be a command, request or a wish. Finally, when you ask someone a question, it is an interrogative sentence and ends in a question mark. Back to Mehek Ma'am's class. Time to move ahead to the next topic. But before that, let's see a few definitions. Conjunction is a word which joins two sentences, words or clauses. For example, but, and, yet, so, for, although, etc. A clause is a group of words that contain a subject and a finite verb and is the smallest grammar sentence that may or may not express a thought. Main clause is a group of words that contain a subject and a verb and makes a complete sense. Subordinate clause is a group of words that contain a subject and a verb but does not make a complete sense. It cannot make a complete meaning. Compound sentence They always contain two or more main clauses. They may or may not have subordinate clause. And third, two main clauses are simply joined by a conjunction. Let's see the structure of compound sentences. So there is the recipe. Independent clause plus conjunction plus independent clause. Let's take an example of compound sentence. Let's see. The sky is clear and the stars are twinkling. Now in this sentence there are two main clauses. First the sky is clear and second the stars are twinkling. And these are joined by a conjunction and. If you can see these both sentences stand as a complete sentence. You can either say sky is clear or stars are twinkling or join them with and and say the sky is clear and the stars are twinkling. The sentence structure of complex sentence will be independent clause plus dependent clause. There can be one or more dependent clauses too. Let's take an example. Because my coffee was too cold, I heated it in the oven. Now, in this sentence, the main clause is I heated it in the oven and subordinate clause is my coffee was too cold and these two sentences are joined by a subordinate conjunction because. The last type of sentences are the mixed sentences. These are a combination of complex sentence and compound sentence. I hope you have learned the sentence structure. There is a small test in the bio. Please solve it for better understanding. We will be learning grammar and grammar rules in our upcoming videos. If you have enjoyed learning please like the video and subscribe the channel thank you for watching happy learning